I'm Kohei Tokunaga from NTT Corporation, and uh, I'm recently working on WebAssembly and containers. And today, I'll talk about recent works for running existing applications like containers on WASM-enabled environments. So this is a summary of this talk. Uh, container to WASM enables to run containers on WASM with CPU emulation, and containers run on WASI and browsers. It supports container to WASM conversion, and also it supports fetching and running a modified container images on browser without conversion. And we've also experimentally added support of QEMU running on browser. Uh, we aim wider range of guest architecture support, including Arc64, and we also expect uh, performance benefits by QEMU, uh, for example, JIT compilation or utilizing of multi-core. So first of all, why porting apps to Watson? So first benefit is we can leverage well-known apps on browser. So uh, for example, for demo of applications on browser demo, dev environments, etc. And as shown in the slide, in community, there are several um, services or projects that enables users to run applications on browser easily without uh, installing applications on the host. And also, WebAssembly is a portable sandbox. We can run untrusted code inside WASM VM without giving direct access to the host. And WASM ecosystem also provides uh, interesting tools that, um, that sound useful for existing applications outside browser as well, as listed in this slide. But porting apps to WASM is not easy. Um, the main reason is Linux-based apps need re-implementation to run inside Wasm VM. And Wasm also lacks Linux compatibility. For example, it doesn't have fork or, or exec support. And so here, can we make like, porting apps easier by running a modified Linux applications inside Wasm VM? So here, uh, container to Wasm comes in. Container to Wasm is a tool to run Linux-based containers inside Wasm VM. The unmodified containers run on real Linux on emulated CPU. And it also supports networking for containers on browsers and WASI. And also it supports uh, WASI's map directly mapping. And here are some examples uh, on this slide uh, for running containers on WASM. First one runs container on WASM time, which is a WebAssembly runtime with support for WASI. And second example runs containers on browsers. So how does it work? Um, as shown in the right figure, uh, container to WASM uses CPU emulators for running containers on WASM. For x86, so, so I mean containers run on real Linux on the emulated CPU. And for x86-64 containers, box emulator is used. And for RISC-V containers, tiny MU emulator is used. And in version 0 0.7, a recent version, we added support for using a QEMU, and QEMU provides a wider range of guest architecture supports. Uh, I'll talk about it later. And, uh, for more details about uh, Container to Wasm internal, you, including di directly mapping or networking, uh, please refer to the documents on the repo. So 
I'm going to talk about distributing containers to browsers. So Container to Watson supports two ways for distributing container images to browsers. The first option is pre-converting containers to Watson blobs. As shown in the left figure, Container to Watson provides C2W command for converting a container to Watson blob. And once a container is converted to Watson blob, it can be uploaded to a server, then browsers can fetch and run them. And second option is to directly distribute OCI container images to browsers. Uh, I'll describe it, uh, this in the next slide. Container to Watson supports fetching and running container images inside browser, so conversion of container image to Watson blob is not needed. As shown in the right figure, a component called image mounter running on a web worker and it fetches and unpacks unmodified OCI or container images inside browser. An unpacked image is, um, um, uh, is mounted to the container via emulator and browser directly fetches container images so the server needs to allow code access. Uh, as far as I know, uh, there is no public container registry with calls support as of now, but you can still, still try uh, this configuration using private registry. And uh, Image Mounter is also supports a technique called lazy pling by eStarDZ image that enables container to start before the entire image contents becoming locally available, so it can shorten the time to start a container. So this is a demo of fetching and running a modified container images on browser without image conversion. Uh, you can also do this on your own machine following uh, the docs on the repo. And on my machine, I have a private registry on localhost. And there is Ubuntu 2404 image on that registry. So to check it. Nope. First, um, I pull and run Ubuntu image on my machine natively using Docker. This is very... Uh, okay. Hmm. All right. So then I can run Ubuntu image natively. Um, So it shows that this is a Ubuntu 24.04 image. And next, I run the same Ubuntu image on browser. So I'm already running a server that serves image mounter, um, explained in the last slide. And when I start a image mounter on my browser, uh, that page fetches Ubuntu 20.04 image from the local host registry directly into the browser, then run it. So this is a, the URL. Uh, so here this, there is a query for um, image on the registry. So what I need to do is just copy it and uh, paste it here. So, uh, so currently, browser fetches and unpacks Ubuntu 20.04 image, and it pulls uh, Ubuntu 24.04 image from localhost registry on my machine. And okay, so shell prompt appears, and I can check. Uh, all right, so Ubuntu image running on the browser. So both of Docker and the browser pull the exactly same container image from the exactly same registry.
Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, Container to Wasm recently added the support for using QMU. I'll talk about it in the following slides. So first of all, what is QMU? QMU is an open source emulator by Fabrice Bellard. As shown in the right figure, uh, it emulates a wide variety of CPUs, including x86, ARM, RISC-V, and also it can emulate a variety of machines, including boards. And QMU is portable. It runs on a variety of host CPUs. And QMU also has uh, performance benefits by supporting JIT compilation of binaries and multi-core emulation utilizing of multi-core. Uh, why do we want to use QMU from container to WASM? By using QMU, we expect to get a wider guest architecture support, including x 64 and ARC64, and also performance benefits of QMU by JIT compilation and multi-core utilization are also, of course, sounds beneficial for our use cases. But we are trying to run containers on WASM environments and QMU uh, currently doesn't support WASM host. So how can we use QMU for WASM host? So we experiment experimentally ported QMU to browser. We called it as QMU WASM. And uh, this is a ported version of a QMU system emulator using MScript and, and it runs 64-bit guests as well. And it also supports JIT backend for WASM and it enables multi-core utilization. So picture in this slide runs QMU WASM on browser and it runs ARC64 Linux. So QMU has a JIT binary translator or JIT compilation called TCG. Uh, TCG defines IR or intermediate representation. Guest code is translated to IR by front end and IR is translated to the host code by backend. As shown in the right figure, this enables QMU to support a variety of guest and host architectures. And TCG also supports multi-core utilization um, on the host, and this is called MTTCG or multi-threaded TCG. And to support WASM on WASM host, uh, we've added WASM backend for TCG. This is a backend for, uh, so this takes, this backend takes IRs and translates them into WASM as shown in the right figure. And WASM VM has Harvard architecture. So even if backend generate WASM code or memory, it is not executable yet. To make it executable, browser APIs can be used. Um, I listed two of them. WebAssembly.module takes a buffer of WASM code and compiles that code. And the WebAssembly.instance takes a module and gives a uh, set of functions defined in the WASM module. And uh, once we get uh, like functions of the module, it can be exposed to the QMU module using a table functionality of WASM. So mscripting allows to access functions on the table as a function pointers. So QMU can, can call WASM modules entry point by just calling it. And actually JIT compilation based on browser API is also used in other emulators on browser as well. For example, V86, QMU.js, um, but they only support 32-bit guest as of now, and they are single-threaded. So we've added 64-bit guest with MTTCG for um, for deal with practical use cases. And uh, I'll, I'll also introduce these emulators in the later slide as well. And we've also enabled uh, pthread support of MScripting. 
uh, to enable MDDCG. So in QMU, um, a unit of instructions to translate is called translation block, or TB. And in QMU, a list of, a, a, a unit of, so TCG gives, I mean, TCG gives um, TBs to uh, WASM backend. And WASM backend translates the TB into an executable WASM module. So WASM backend translates an IR instruction to the corresponding WASM instructions. And uh, we've also implemented 64-bit instructions for IR. Uh, this is ne actually necessary for uh, supporting 64-bit guest and MTTCG. And for example, uh, as shown in the figure in this slide, at I64, um, IR instruction is translated into I64.add WASM instruction. And WASM code also contains uh, get and set instructions. And they are actually needed because WASM backend binds each IR variables to WASM variables and um, instruction in WASM is a um, stack-based one. And QMU's memory and helper functions are also shared or imported to the WASM mo uh, TB module. Uh, so memory related IR instructions can also be translated to WASM code. Uh, and code in TB sometimes needs to call functions provided by QMU, for example, for finding the next TB to, to chain. Uh, these functions provided by QMU are called helper functions, and WASM code can still access necessary helper functions provided by QMU by importing them. However, there are several considerations um, when creating WASM modules for each TB. Uh, first one is that compilation overhead. It can't be ignored and it slows down the execution of the guest code. And the second one is that uh, browsers are not capable of creating thousands of modules. Uh, to mitigate for these considerations, QMU WASM enables both of WASM backend and TCI. Uh, TCI is QMU's IR interpreter. And all the TBs run on TCI by default, and TBs running uh, only only TBs running many times are considered as like a hot TB, and they are compiled to us. And in the following slide, um, I'll show the performance benefit thanks to QMU's JIT and multi-core support. Uh, this experiment measured duration to gzip compress 10 megabyte random data using pigz. Pigz is a gzip implementation with multi-processor support, so benefits of multi-core support uh, can also be observed. And this uses pigz x8664 binary and runs it on the emulator inside browser. And this experiment compares QMU WASM and Box ported to browser with MScript. And uh, Box is a portable x86 emulator with interpreter approach and actually container to WASM uh, ported this to MScript as well. And uh, container to WASM uses Box for x86 64 containers by default. So this is the duration for running PIGZ. Uh, box took over 40 seconds for completing the command. Uh, but the QMU completed this command much faster. And we enabled four threads MTTCG. So, uh, and performance is improved more in this case. And uh, QMU WASM can be experimentally used from a container to WASM. For ARC64 containers, container to WASM uses QMU WASM 
by default with dash dash to dash js flag. And uh, x86 64 containers can also use QMU Watson with uh, additional flags. And please note that uh, this is still in an early stage and experimental feature, and there are some several limitations, including networking is not enabled as of now, and pre-initialization like Wiser is not enabled. So it means um, every time starting a container, it takes long time to start for fully booting the Linux kernel and the VM. Uh, I mean, cold start. So next is the demo of uh, running Arc64 container inside browser. So yeah, this one. Um, so in this browser, QME Wasm uh, is running another emulator, and this runs Alpine container Arc64, and shell prompt appears. Um, here and uh, using a unim command, you can you can confirm that this is an Arc64 environment. And uh, OS release shows that this is Alpine container, Alpine OS. And you can also see the root file system uh, located at slash. So. Finally, um, I'll talk about the use cases and future works of container to Watson and QMU, uh, future works of container to Watson and QMU Watson in the following slides. And the running container on browser is a very generic functionality. So I believe this can be used for a variety of use cases, including VS code or extension for running containers inside the browser. And there is actually uh, already an experimental like, implementation of this plugin on GitHub. And uh, another use case would be interactive on browser demo with emulated machines. Again, this is also there is a demo page um, for this. And uh, another interesting use case is sandbox sandbox execution environment for containers and also application debugger runnable inside browser or record and replay debugging. Uh, these kind of use cases are also sounds really interesting as a target to use cases. And uh, another possible use case is boards on browser. So use cases of QMU Watson are not limited to containers, of course, and a variety of machines, including boards, are also usable thanks to QMU. Um, and uh, example of emulated Raspberry Pi board is also available um, on QMU Wasm repo. So as shown in the right figure, emulated Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi kernel uh, can, run, can run on browser. So this is a demo um, of running a uh, Raspberry Pi board inside browser. So again, QMU Wasm. QMU Wasm is used as the emulator. And this runs BusyBox in the Raspberry Pi board emulated on browser. And using a uname command. You can confirm that uh, this is Arc64 environment. And uh, and from CPU info, you can confirm that uh, this is a Raspberry Pi environment. And also, you can also get the board information under CCFS. So it shows uh, this is a Raspberry Pi environment. And of course, you can see the root file system at slash. So 
So container to Watson and QEMU Watson are still in an early stage of development. Uh, there are several future works to be done. Um, first, one, first one is performance and stability improvement. Um, I mentioned several limitations about QMB WASM, uh, so we need to fix them and uh, further improvement for WASM backend of QMB WASM is needed. And integration with AOT approach sounds also interesting. Uh, there is already an AOT compiler called ELFConf uh, that is for Linux Arc 64 ELF to WASM. AOT translator by my colleague Masashi Yoshimura. And uh, another future work is uh, integration with more QMU features, for example, enabling more guest CPUs, machines, networking, or graphics. And also, currently, QMU WASM doesn't run on WASI, so running on WASI is also a possible future work. And integration with ecosystem is also very important. Uh, when it comes to running operating system on browser, uh, it needs to access to package repos, like APK apt. Uh, and, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, currently, um, they, are, they doesn't allow calls access. Uh, so, uh, this is, so integration of package repos with uh, browser environments are needed. And also, uh, calls allowed container registries are also expected. Currently, container registries, public one, uh, doesn't support um, calls access. So, uh, to to successfully access uh, to registries inside the browser, uh, um, calls allowed container registries are needed. And. Uh, to encourage discussion around this topic, um, I'm proposing Container to Wasm as a sandbox project to CNCF. Uh, this aims to fill in the missing piece in the ecosystem as a solution for compatibility issue. And this also aims to be a neutral community for discussing Container to Wasm migration. And uh, this also try to encourage collaboration of containers and Wasm. So, if you're interested in um, about this topic, or about this proposal, um, feel free to reach out to me. And in community, uh, there are several works similar to this project, as I mentioned in the previous slides. Um, V86 is x86 compatible on browser CPU emulator by Fabian Hema. Uh, it supports wide variety of guest OSs and also supports G translation of binaries using browser APIs. Uh, it currently currently doesn't support x86 64 guests. And QMU.js uh, is also QEMU ported to browser by Anatoly Trezinenko, and it supports G translation or TCG using browser APIs, but it is uh, single threaded and it doesn't support 64-bit guests. So QMU WASM focuses on uh, pra practical use cases like x86-64 containers or applications on browser and MTTCZ. So this is a summary of this talk. Container to WASM enables to run containers on WASM with CPU emulation. Uh, containers run on WASI and browsers it, it supports container to WASM conversion. It also supports fetching and running modified container images on browser without conversion. And uh, we've recently added experimental support of QMU on browser, a wider range of guest architecture support, including Arc64, um, is achieved. And uh, also we can observe, we, we observed a performance benefit by QMU by JIT compilation and utilizing of multi-core. So I think that is all. Thank you very much. So I think five minutes left. Do you have any question? Oh, yes, please.
Sorry, yes, if you don't mind waiting for the microphone. Hey, great talk. I was just curious, do you see a possible future where these could um, uh, replace server-side container usage in production environments? Uh, so the question of um, um, like, uh, replacing server-side container usage with this, uh, with, with this technique. Um, that sounds really interesting use case. For example, like um, offloading several, um, uh, I, for example, for in terms of like uh, on browser de on browser demo use cases, um, of course server side um, server side is completely oh, server side like a server side I, I mean v virtual machine is completely not needed. Uh, everything runs on browser. Uh, so, but uh, aside from like a demo use cases, for example, like offloading several um, function several applications or functions or. Uh, yeah, building building blocks to browser. Uh, that sounds also interesting use cases. Um, to achieve that, I think um, further improvement of performance for this technique is required. But yes, um, offloading several existing like a server side component into browser. That's, that is also sounds a very um, interesting use case of this technique.